Hi, my name's Danny, and these are my diecast disasters. In this video, I will be restoring this Matchbox Super Kings number K26, the Bedford cement truck. These were produced by Lesney England from 1978 until 1984. Let's take a closer look. We can see that the casting is overall in great shape, just a lot of missing paint. The plastic grill and light section is quite beat up and missing a lot of chrome. The plastic mixing tank is fairly worn and scratched and only a faint trace of the red stripes remains. Shining a light inside the tank, we can see the remains of some kid's concrete mixture. This small red handle here turns the mixing tank. It's not working so well. There it goes. Oh, no, it's jammed again. Around the other side of the truck, this small tab can be pulled forward to release the tipper section. Here we can see where it says cement truck. I start with a grinding bit on my rotary tool and use it to remove the axles holding on the front and rear wheels. The axle holding on the tipper section of the trailer was quite short and the flattened end was very close to the casting. It was going to be very hard to grind it down without damaging the casting, so I apply some masking tape to protect it. I try to slide the masking tape in under the flattened head of the axle. Now I can grind down the axle head without damaging the casting. There she goes. Now the tipper section comes straight off and I can remove the masking tape. I carefully drill out the rivet posts holding on the cab. I am careful not to drill any more than I need to and damage the chassis casting.
With the rivet post drilled, the cab pretty much comes straight off. There's a small tab holding it on at the front. Now with a bit of wiggling I can remove the seat section. The tab that holds down the tipper section on the trailer is also attached to this. Look at that cool little steering wheel. I attempted to pry off the plastic grill section at the front but the pins holding it on are very fat and there was no way I was going to be able to do it without breaking it. So I used my scalpel to cut them off. With the grill section removed, the windscreen just pops straight out. There is a small cast section holding the mixing tank and the crank handle in place. This is also held on with some rivets. Now we can take the tipper section assembly apart. Sands a small axle section from the rear of the mixing tank, which had fallen on the floor without me noticing before filming. It's like the lamest kinder surprise ever. Finally, there are two very short rivets holding the remaining parts of the tipper section together. Here are the parts after disassembly. The metal parts are treated with stripper to remove the worn out old paint. After a few minutes, the blistered paint is scrubbed off with a toothbrush in some water. You will find that the first application of stripper usually removes 90% of the paint. You can then repeat the process adding stripper to the remaining patches of paint. This usually leaves only a few small stubborn bits of paint remaining in some of the recessed areas. This can be removed by rubbing in paint stripper with a small brush until it dissolves or it can be scratched out with a sharp tool. Here are our metal parts after the paint stripping. I use a wire brush on my rotary tool to remove the oxidation and burnish the parts ready for painting.
It is very satisfying watching the parts clean up and start to take on a shine. Here are the metal parts cleaned and ready for primer. Before painting, I drill out the rivet posts in the cab with a 1.7mm drill. A couple of drops of oil are added and the holes are tapped with a 256 tap. I now screw a couple of 256 button head screws into place. There are some small casting imperfections above the doors on the cab which I decide to tidy up. I want to keep the line above the door, so I begin by working very slowly and gently with the file, working away at the high points of the rough section. It feels like you are getting nowhere at first, but eventually it will become smooth. After a while the rough section is smoothed out and I rub it down with some sandpaper and take a look. It is looking a lot better, but the line above the door is not very well defined, so I do a bit more work with the file. That's looking better. Here is the cab after the doors have been filed and sanded. There was also some flashing around the hydraulics on the rear of the trailer, which I decided to clean up as well. Finally, before painting, I need to join the two main parts of the tipper section. I use some glue to join the parts together. Now I will create some faux rivets to replicate the ones that could originally be seen under the tipper section. I knead together a small amount of epoxy putty. 
I now roll two very small balls of the putty. I now just take a watch tool and press the putty balls into place. These are then left to cure for a few hours. The yellow metal parts are now primed with Tamiya Fine White Surface Primer and the black chassis section is primed with Tamiya Grey Fine Primer. Here are the metal parts after two light coats of primer. Now it's time to take a look at the details on the die cast parts. The cab is quite a simple casting, it has some little grills on the front, some door handles and other small grills on the sides, and something, maybe a sunroof on the top of the cab. The main rear tipper section is quite a cool casting. It has some nice details on the back with the chute with some sort of latch on it. The ladder and the hydraulic system. On the front there is this cool kind of control panel with a couple of dials and some buttons maybe. Underneath we can see where it says cement truck alongside my faux rivets. The small part of the tipper section has a nice dial detail on the top of it. I really like the chassis casting as it has the cool leaf spring suspension. It also has the petrol tank and some other sort of tanks or something on the other side. We can see here where it says Matchbox Super Kings and Lesney Products 1977. I assume they designed it in 1977 and then started selling it in 1978. The yellow parts are now painted with Tamiya X8 Lemon Yellow. The base is painted with Tamiya X1 Black. Then all the parts are given two coats of Tamiya TS13 Clear. Here they are after painting. With the metal parts painted it is now time to work on the plastic parts. I start by giving them a good wash in some warm soapy water. Try to get into all the little nooks and crannies as it can be easy to miss some small patches and it doesn't show up until the pieces are completely dried and then you have to repeat the process all over again. Here are all the plastic parts after a good wash. You can see the small missing piece of the mixing tank from earlier on. The wheels are more or less okay. I re-chrome the raised areas with my chrome pen.
The front grille section is definitely worse for wear and has a lot of dents. The worst part is this outer raised line. I start with a very light sanding. I use a small screwdriver to push the roughest parts back into some resemblance of a straight line. Well, that's looking a little better. I will now re-chrome the details. Careful now, don't make a mess. As the fresh chrome is added, it definitely starts to come back to life a bit. After the chrome has dried, the parts are dipped in self-shining floor polish, covered and left to dry. The mixing tank parts have some small scratches and have been worn quite dull. The red stripes have just about worn right away. I begin by sanding out the rough surface and scratches with some 1200 grit sandpaper. Hang on, where are you going? After sanding, they are given a quick polish with some polishing compound. They are now looking a lot smoother. There is not much left of the original red lines as a guide, but I mask the parts as close to the original as I can. To paint the tank, I begin with a very fine layer of Tamiya Fine White Primer. I then sprayed a very thin tack coat of Tamiya X7 Red, followed by a top coat of red. This was left to dry for a few minutes while I cleaned my airbrush, and then the masking tape was carefully removed. This was left overnight to dry and then sprayed with a thin coat of Tamiya TS13 Clear. Here is the mixing tank after the clear coat. Now we have refurbished all of our parts, we just need to put our cement truck back together. First I will reattach the tipper section of the trailer to the chassis. I know the parts are going to rub together a bit, 
and this is likely to chip off some of the paint so I apply a small amount of masking tape to prevent this. That's better, now they can jiggle around a bit without any damage. As the original axle is too short, I use a small nail to make a replacement axle. I use a cutting disc on my rotary tool to cut the axle to length. I also use my rotary tool to round off the button head of the nail so that it looks more like an original matchbox axle. I then use my drill press and Marty's method to reinstall the axle. Now time to put the wheels back on. The axles were a little bit bent, but I just put them in the vise and straightened them with some pliers. The drill press is used again to flatten the end of the axles and hold the tyres in place. Once the axles are in place there is no more rough shaky stuff so I can remove my protective masking tape. Next, I glue the small plastic axle part onto the end of the painted half of the mixing tank. The mixing tank is reassembled and placed into position. Next for the crank handle and cog. The last part of the trailer is then glued into place holding the mixing tank assembly together. The grill and headlight section is then glued onto the front of the cab. The windscreen drops into place. and then the seats. The colour match screws are removed from the base of the cab. The cab is then put back in position and the screws are replaced and tightened, holding it firmly in place. So before we unveil our finished truck, let's take a moment to be reminded of what we started with. A chipped and peeling paint job, 
wonky wheels and a mixer that had lost its stripes and didn't want to spin round. A die-cast disaster if ever I saw one. And here is our Bedford cement truck restored. No more chipped scruffy paint, just shiny smooth yellow and black. The windscreen is clear and the chrome highlights stand out again. No more dull faded mixing tank. It is now shiny and smooth with clean new red stripes. What a great toy this is. The mixing tank now spins around quite smoothly. The tipper mechanism is working fine and our faux rivets look great. Thanks heaps for watching everyone and once again welcome to my new subscribers and thank you so much for all of the great comments and likes on my videos. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe.